Uh, in studio with a very angry mogul, uh, Mike Hornby. Uh, could only be described as demonstrative as I watched him through the glass in Colin's producer room while Kelly Allen was on talking about the possible misuse of funds yeah. in the Hope Scholarship, or at least poor use of funds. I, I don't think angry is it. It's just it, it infuri- I angry in, infuriating. Well, I, is, angry. I couldn't disagree with her more. Um, I think the Hope Scholarship um, has been fantastic for West Virginia. And I love to see, we, we talk about unaccredited schools. Well, there are certain homeschoolers and, and Christian schools that are unaccredited but are doing fantastic. And I think um, parents should have the right to put their kids where they think their best education is. And if that money needs to follow the child, the money needs to follow the child. And if we have, I think it's 40 something hundred dollars going to a child to where their parents think are their best educator, I think that's great. Um, and it's only the state's portion that is going there. It's not uh, the full $14,000 that... Uh, but, but I think her point is, if, if the state is going to give money to parents, shouldn't, mm-hmm. shouldn't they at least know that they're using it at a legitimate school and not for karate lessons? Well, if a parent is homeschooling and is doing everything themselves and they've got extra money and karate lessons are what they think are for an extracurricular activity or teaching their child lessons in life i think i'm perfectly fine with it let me ask a question about that unaccredited because um and that's a very wishy-washy so if if you're either accredited or you're not accredited say joe say joe ferretti ken apple and buzz poland got together and opened up a business school yes for for younger students that would that because they don't have credentialing and teaching they don't have teaching certificates. It would be unaccredited. Or they're, but they're experts in their or field. Or they're on their way to being accredited, but they're not accredited yet. So yeah. that would make it unaccredited. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of a lot of the Christian schools. And again, I don't know too much specifics about this, but I know a lot of the Christian schools uh, within the state aren't choose not to be accredited. They they would rather teach their values and their things. And I think, as a parent, you have the right to send your child wherever you want to get the education, and whether that's homeschool or not. Is there an unspoken ulterior motive through the Hope Scholarship and such programs that if if the point comes where the public school system, there's, there's a flood away from the public school system that maybe the um, Board of Education at the state level will take a look back and say, hey, maybe we're not doing something right here, and hey, maybe we need to make some changes well, I, I for think, the benefit of the children? I think that's what the legislative legislators did by creating this is and we're talking about what 3,000 kids approximately across the whole state um, there are parents out there that were not happy with the way the actual school system works which is, what, which is why we did charter schools why, why we did the hope scholarship so that every parent and every child in West Virginia can have a choice on education all right so here you go you may have stepped in it let's see how you do on this one there all right with Stacy Burkett it's their choice, but should the state be funding it without any oversight? The legislature was very vocal on wanting oversight of the state BOE because they are funding it. Why the disconnect? Well, the, the disconnect, it, it, I mean, I don't think there's no oversight. I think the the, the auditor is mm-hmm. deciding who, who gets these funds and who doesn't. People have to apply. So there are instances where a, you know, you talk about karate lessons or whatever it is. I don't know how that happened or what what the instance was, but I think there is oversight. Is there oversight? Like if that forty three hundred dollars, if a student stays in a public school, is there oversight over that forty three hundred dollars? Or it's just- well, and that forty three hundred is a lot higher in a public school too, and we don't have oversight um, or direct. Over- the legislature doesn't have direct oversight over the board of education. We don't get to uh, look at rules of the board of ed- education and things like that. So. I mean, the State Board of Education is appointed, not not elected. Um, so I, I think it's very similar to both. All right. Now, moving on. Yes. You mentioned something about serving at the Labor Day breakfast. Are you doing that? I think I will be. Yeah. Uh, I usually eat there. Buzz, get that mic a little closer to you so, uh, so we can hear you. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So is Mike Hornby serving at your breakfast? Or what's going on here? Um, I'm taking the late we, shift, we, right, we, Buzz? We, we are asking for uh, any, anyone out there in WRNR land that would like to volunteer to help wait tables, bus tables. Uh, if, if that's not your thing and you're great at scrambling eggs and want to 
pitch in and do that. Uh, it was successful last year. We added pancakes uh, as a free breakfast for any kids 10 and under, and uh, we're not checking IDs. <laughs> um, <laughs> You should. <laughs> Where's your bouncer? So a ten year old go to social media. Yeah, they, they, there they was do a ten year old that can yeah. the, the, the the child ticket uh, is for a free breakfast, including the scrambled eggs, pancakes. Mike, how are you at flipping pancakes? I'm great buddy? at flipping pancakes. I did the pancake we, breakfast. We might put you on the pancake line, but can you do a Mickey Mouse? I can do a Mickey Mouse. I can't do much more than that. Uh, that's okay. about my I level. I can't do the yeah. smiley face within it. Or yeah, 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 no. I, uh, okay. The, anyway. You just need the, a mold, the, man. The, uh, Pop it in. Uh, the adult tickets for the War Memorial Park Labor Day breakfast are $30 in advance, $35 at the door. And we do not take credit cards. Uh, we tried to do an online thing this year, and there was some uh, malfunction between it and the bank and so forth. But we'll work on that again next year. Uh, as for now, uh, there's just tons of people out there that I, I could not get this thing done without their help selling tickets. I'm not going to rattle off the whole list, but if I can mention the, the more public places yeah, sure. that uh, ha have tickets available in case uh, somebody in the next few days wants to drop in and pick up some tickets and it's more convenient for them that way. Uh, there are tickets available at Spiker Insurance, Parsons Ford, Pill and Pill, Spring Valley Farm Market, Patterson's Drug Store downtown, Depot Florist, Hensel Real Estate, uh, the CVB Convention Tourism Office, the Rec Board Office, Uncle Joe's Barbershop, Main Street Martinsburg through Robbie Blair, Smallwood Small Insurance, and Panhandle Printing and Design. That would be my how many How many people are you expect in this? Oh, and the Chamber of Commerce. Somehow I missed the chamber on there. Um, some of those offices are just Monday through Friday, and, and so... Uh, you need to run out there and get your ticket today, tomorrow. Don't wait till Saturday or Sunday. And how many people are you expecting? Um, right around 400. We've we've been serving for a number of years. We'd love to boost that number. We will have more food available uh, if if we can get 450 people to turn out. Right, we'll be good. And uh, if if it's coming down to about 400 towards uh, the closing time, which we serve from 7.30 to 10.30, by the way. But somewhere there around 10 o'clock, uh, we'll have a good feel for how much more we'll need. And how's and, the uh, how's the coffee situation? Because I know every time we do a War Memorial Park event, it, it, if you get there early, the coffee, have we sorted that situation out? It's it's a work in progress, right? <laughs> but we've moved the whole co coffee operation into the concession stand. Fantastic! So it's, it's on an entirely different electrical system. We're not overloading. We always had the, trouble at the Rotary uh, pancake breakfast with the coffee situation down at yeah. the, at the pool. Yeah. By the way, don't go to Panhandle Printing and Design for tickets because Mike Heitz said he has sold out. He sold out. So either get him some more tickets, Buzz, or. Tell Take Mike Height I will have tickets, more tickets there for him. Too sweet. Uh, so that just in case somebody that's where they want to go, we'll, we'll have that covered uh, what time, I'm, you know, yeah. by 1030. Height's 10 your champion seller, man. Is the breakfast a fundraiser for a, a this, charity? This is the once-a-year fundraiser for the War Memorial Park Association. The War Memorial Park Association – created War Memorial Park in 1948, and uh, it was it's a 501c3 that um, uh, operated the park for many decades, but in 1987 sold the park to the city of Martinsburg for $1 uh, with the stipulation it be uh, for public recreation in perpetuity. And uh, the... War Memorial Park Association, this 501c3, continues to operate uh, as a basically like a friends of the park type organization. And uh, not 100%, but pretty darn close. 
of the capital improvements that you see at War Memorial Park are from the funds generated by this once a year fundraiser, the Labor Day breakfast. Or do they answer to the Parks and Rec Board buzz or are they completely independent of the Parks and Rec Board? We are completely independent of the Parks and Rec Board, although that's how I got on the Parks and Rec Board was back in the day I, I became like an, a, a liaison between the two. Mm-hmm. All right, very good. And uh, what are the choices for food this year? Um, it's pretty pretty traditional sticking with the plan uh other than the pancakes i said that we've added for uh, particularly for children but hey if if you want a pancake i, I i'm i'm gonna 30 bucks thumb, you get a pancake. thumbs up yeah, <laughs> yeah you know you you get it you know you want toast and a pancake we'll get it for you Pancake sandwich between two slices uh, normal, of toast. The normal serving is either a fresh, never frozen, fresh grilled steak cooked to order um, or country ham steak with scrambled eggs, toast, juice, coffee, milk. Mm-hmm. Um, pancakes are there for the kids, but again, if there's an adult that feels kid-like and wants a pancake, by golly. I'm thinking that adults going to get an ugly look, though. When you go and you say, I want a pancake, too, you're going to say, are you really just 10, John? Or and, steak and, and pancakes. Yeah. If, if you ask for a smiley face pancake that, that, <laughs> yeah. that Mike can't produce, uh-huh. you might get an ugly okay. look All from right. Mike. What's your target for the money this year, Buzz? What are you hoping to build or um, enhance? Well, we have not raised the price, so we don't expect our gross sale to go any higher, yet expenses have gone up somewhat. We get a lot of things donated. And I'd, I'd be remiss if I started trying to name off some of the major donations for that. But so I, I don't want to do that. Well, what, what, uh, what do you hope to do in the but, park, though, with the money? Uh, as, oh, uh, the, I know one, the one major pavilion mm-hmm. that has not yet been refurbished in many years is what we call the hollow pavilion. It's uh, a little bit secluded. People, not everybody even realizes it's there, but if, if you're coming into War Memorial Park on the Georgia Avenue south side, as you go through the park gates and by the flower planters, then it's immediately on your right, sits back in a little hollow there, kind of out of the way. Uh, it was a used pavilion from uh, R.M. Roach and Sons back in the Oh, 30 years ago at, at their location in Hagerstown, and they were quitting using it, and we hauled that thing from Hagerstown in there, reconstructed it, and added a wing on to it for a buffet line for reunions and things going on there. But uh, all the others have been totally rebuilt now in the, in the past uh, 15, 20 years. Right. And Labor Day is the final day for the pools to be open in the park, Correct. 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 And unless you're a dog. Pool. Pool, yeah, singular. If, if you're, you're a dog, dog or want to bring your dog, there is a um, dog uh, pool? A, a, a pool day for dogs. Um, it's a fundraiser for Rescue Me, I believe. Uh, they've been doing that for the last couple years. After the pool's closed, it's, it's, it's on Saturday, the probably the 9th. I, I'm, I'm shooting off the top of my head whose job is it to get all the fur out of the filter after that well they empty the pool right after that don't they? it's <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's still going into the filter <laughs> which is why we only have a pool that's why you do it at the end <laughs> yeah, the last day you're right so uh remember all the talk about the indoor pool when war memorial was getting redone about 25 years ago buzz Mm-hmm. Right. And, oh, uh, yeah. It was kind of funny, I think, because Steve mentioned what the price of it was at the time, which seemed astronomical, like $1.9 million or something like that, which is now like a deposit was, on, on an, an indoor pool. It was a million to totally rebuild the War Memorial Pool, and the city and the county both came together and mm-hmm. split that, um, the capital expense of doing it. I mean, there's lots of operational costs, yes. and that's what the admission fees basically cover. Uh, but, yeah, to, to do... Um, a, a, an enclosure at that time was going to be an additional million. Right. And uh, we had a, a fundraising campaign, capital campaign, to enclose the pool. Um, and we only reached about 500000 
<clears throat> and so we offered people their money back. It just wasn't going to happen. And uh, almost everybody said, oh, keep it and use it for something good with Parks and Rec. And that 500000 went into the Berkeley 2000 Rec Center, which was brand new at the time, but needed lots of accessory items, you know, school boards and bleachers and all the stuff that separate from building the structure itself. And uh, it was, it was, the money was very well used and certainly Berkeley 2000 has been added on to countless times mm-hmm. since. It's got a little irregular uh, traffic flow to the floor plan going through the different parts the way it was designed. But uh, Well, now they're possibly talking about bringing this subject up again with uh, the hospital identifying some mm-hmm. land as a possibility. How much is the Parks and Rec Board getting into that now, or is that still considered too distant? Uh, w- we would certainly be part of that discussion. But it's it's something that would have to be far more than just parks and recreation. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it and the operation and maintenance uh, of an indoor pool would would be something that's going to need a lot of different pieces of the community coming together. And I would think, including the Berkeley Medical. Um, that the they, hospital, they, yeah. they could get reimbursement for from insurance for for uh, physical therapy things and stuff like that that would would really help push it over the top well and and occupy the pool during the school hours all through the winter that otherwise there wouldn't be anybody in it mm-hmm. other than a couple senior water babes trying to do a water aerobics <laughs> hey so what time does the breakfast get started buzz Monday morning. uh well the volunteers will start rolling in there at 6 a.m but we don't start serving until 7 30 and you'll 7 30 until 10 30 until 10 and um uh, I, sh- I should as a disclaimer say or until sold out i mean if if there's uh just an overwhelming response out there that we don't expect uh, i guess it's possible we could run out but we're going to have food for steaks country ham steak steve catlett's still taking care of coordinating all the uh, procurement of the food items and so forth we'll have uh provisions for 450 mm-hmm. but we uh and toward later towards the end of the morning i started to say we always sell if there's going to be a surplus we sell the steaks and so forth for five dollars and in no time they're great steaks and they are good quality people will buy up you know packs of 10 or so of those at a time and they, they go pretty quick so it's good for us to be overstocked on that kind of thing well thanks for coming in buzz best of luck on the breakfast hope you raise a ton of money Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank WRNR for their great support of the community. Good job. Thank you.